Namaste, Om Sai Ram. In today's episode, we'll continue the series Pointers from Dr. Anna Saheb Gavankar that are mentioned in the book A Jewel of Sign Devotion. So, Gautam, thank you as always for your time. We can speak on the practice of Namsmaran, which Anna Saheb was a practitioner of and he recommended. Yes. Hmm. So if I may read out uh, in this pointer what appealed to me and then we can explore it. Very beautiful example Anna Saheb gives. If a child is asked to choose between an ornament and a toy, it will definitely pick up the toy. It will show indifference towards ornaments, although they are more precious. A jiva too behaves in the same fashion. It likes to be engrossed in various karmas. Of course, both pain and pleasure follow the karmas eventually. Then the jiva feels wary of engaging in karma. Saints know that this process is inevitable and to avoid this, they have suggested the two paths of Namsmaran at Satsang. Namsmaran and Satsang. If a jiva adopts one of the two or both, it will be away from the fatigue that comes due to karma. Its interest and inclination will then only be towards the love of God. So, again, as we have said earlier in the series, for those who are caught up wrapped up in the suffering of Maya, the psychological suffering, this constant chasing after pleasure, 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 trying to avoid pain, though realizing that life is about pleasure and pain, and it's about facing both. So as he points out here, that the focus of attention shifts with Nams Maran, with Satsang, to the real. What is the real? That which is not transient that which is not fleeting and therefore the emphasis on Namsmaran. I would like to add Gautam, in the Satcharit there are many instances right in the beginning of the Satcharit where Baba himself has mentioned in the Kalyug the mere recitation of my name will do away with evil sins and tendencies of past births and one will attain the state of self-realization. So, in one of our earlier videos, Guruji had even done a meditation for us and he had rather shown us one sadhana on Namsmaran which was linked to the breath. It is an internal one, you don't have to recite it aloud. So very simple, because even Baba would say this, the mere recitation of the name Sai Sai. So what Guruji advocated is, on the in-breath, one has Sa, and on the out-breath it is E, Sai. So this practice also can be done, it's like a meditation as well as Namsmaran. Yes, that is beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. If one is not able to do that, and let's say, as I gave the example before, you're going somewhere and just remembering to repeat the name while you're, even while you're just looking out the window. You see, because we must understand and not say, oh, he said Namsmaran, it's not for me. Why did he say it? What is behind it? If we understand this, then it becomes easier to absorb and imbibe. We know he is saying it for our benefit <laughs> in daily living. So this is a very nice uh, pointer. And I would like to add a bit here. I'd like to read some more. If you want peace in daily life, the only way is through constant meditation and contemplation on the divine. For this, the practice of Namsmaran is essential and will help focus the mind on God. He repeats, Nick, this is, he is reiterating the point, chanting the divine name and practicing meditation are essential. 
for the love of the devotee the compassionate lord will certainly come running to him this is the true joy of living else what is the use of all the brahma gyan it's like what is always on your mind what you think about most is what is dearest to you so if if i'm thinking about the stock markets all the time <laughs> morning to night that is what is dearest to me right when i experience some nice falls in the stock market that is when i'm suffering then i remember god and so for the jiva as he says who's been through this up and down up and down the merry go round <laughs> you know just fine tune and start reciting the name of god start meditating or attending satsang he's given all these pointers and that is what we look at you see gautam when you were reading out one line really stood out to me for the love of the devotee the compassionate lord will certainly come running to him now you see when we started this series on the sakshatkar why i find anna's life and pointers like a foundational pillar i would say is because he speaks from direct experience what he has said here he has experienced which we've read in the chapter before yes that when the yearning is there god will come running to the devotee which yes. was the experience yes absolutely and let's not forget nick what a strong renanu bandhan that must have been for a 12 year old boy to be presented before baba and for baba to give the kafni that takes me to the next point of attitude and over here i feel sometimes people may say oh these mahabhaktas were so great it's their great fortune indeed they are indeed but they started somewhere so one can go with the attitude i can begin now i've been given the inspiration i've been shown the way mark darshan so to speak but i can start now so with that in the next episode i would like to speak with you on the point of attitude beautiful point very well said mm. very well said